910, Big 550, KTRS. Let's talk a little Congressman John Shimkus, who's been doing this for 16 years now. Good morning, Congressman Shimkus. 18, but uh, who's Well, counting? you've been doing it with me for 16 years oh, or so. that's true. Yeah, and we've been all over town. It's Welcome like, to the new studios. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I was looking out the windows, and, and from my house in Collinsville, I actually can see this tower. Is that right? On a clear day. Well, yeah, there you, you go. Because you see two main... You know, right. high-rise areas, and right. this is the second one, a little bit further, yeah, a little further west. So there you go. I'll right. be able to wave. All right, there you go. Um, all right, Congressman Shimkus, President Obama last night said that he underestimated the ISIS threat. What are your thoughts as you watch that? I think he's probably correct, and he's probably <laughs> <laughs> he's. And I like to use the word ISIL, and and let me let me explain why. Yeah, please do. Because L stands so it's a, 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 a Islamic State, Iraq. And the Levant, L stands for Levant. Okay. And Levant is a region of uh, the uh, 500 uh, A.D. Caliphate conquest of the Middle East. Okay. And that area stretches from really Lebanon down to Egypt. So that means it goes through Israel. It goes through Jordan. And so part of this Islamic radical military uh, state is to redevelop that caliphate, which, which threatens the Jordanians, the, our friends, the, our Israelis. Uh, yeah, and this is kind of important. The S was Syria. It was Iraq right. and Syria. But the L, you're saying, it, it much more accurate in their definition of they want to take a bigger piece of the pie or a different piece of the pie. Yeah, they want to reestablish the caliphate, an Islamic radical state of the Levant, which would be that whole area. Again, it goes down to Egypt, parts of Egypt, Lebanon, Israel, right. Jordan. And that's the real that's i mean there's a lot of concerns but people understand that that's, right that helps define it better and that's why i use isil yeah well is this isil did they come i mean they've, they've been around they've been growing it's a growing threat but i mean was it did they just they sort of burst onto the scene with these with these be, beheadings which many people say was a public relations stunt to sort of get on the front page so i'm um, I mean, we knew about him. I mean, how how can the president of the United States say he underestimated what is now considered the most dangerous threat in the world? Well, I, you know, I, I try to live in the today and right. not the past. Um, but there were people who were worried about ISIL two years ago. Uh, I think we're going to find out that uh, Hillary Clinton had raised issues. Uh, Leon Panetta, who was the head right. director of the CIA, had raised issues. There was that debate of how do we, how do we get involved in this what was then a civil war mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, in Syria against Bashar al-Assad. And then remember, this is a group that Al Qaeda said they're too radical for us. Right. So uh, then that question about so. Petraeus and a lot of uh, uh, national leaders says, no, we've got to, we've got to find, that's the operative word, moderate elements within Syria and, and arm them so they can hold off and overthrow Assad and also hold off against this Islam Islamic State. Yeah. Uh, you're big with NATO, right? You're, right. You, you've, you've followed this. You're, you're very, one of the best people we can get on this topic. ISIL is using our... Weapons from the Iraq war that were left over, that were taken, that, that were given. I mean, how much of our uh, weapons are being used against us and, and are being used for their terror reign? Yeah, and, I, and initially I don't think a lot because it was in Syria and there's black markets, there's uh, uh, defeating the Syrian army. But when they went into Iraq mm -hmm. and the uh, Iraqis threw down their arms and fled, right. they claimed all that weapons and equipment. I heard someone else a couple weeks ago talk about uh, the, the Iraqis and, and their, their lack of guts and their lack of a, a backbone in the fight, much different than the Afghanis, who are warriors and fighters for thousands of years, right. and uh, just a different mentality. And that, and that has been the frustrating thing. How do you then... How do you, if they really have no sense of country mm -hmm. or patriotism, because it's a, a split state, how do you get them to stand and fight and, you know, prepare to lay down their lives for what? So I think that's, there was, that's probably part of the underestimation, too, of the, the will of the Iraqi military to fight. Yeah. How, how much should we worry that now we're going to uh, arm the, um, the moderate groups in Syria to help fight this. How much should we be worried that we're doing the same thing again? I, I don't 
discount that concern. I, I mean, I've supported the president, and I think we should be involved. And uh, but there are uh, really credible people who who raise that issue. Uh, I do know this is that there are the numbers flow back and forth. Five hundred Brits mm-hmm. uh, who are citizens who obviously who are there fighting. You, right. This is, uh, they think, numbers up to 100 maybe uh, U.S. citizens mm-hmm. of some sort who are over there. Uh, I would much rather have them fighting there than then control that area, safe haven, as we saw in Afghanistan prior to September 11th, than that be the launching location for attacks against the West. So um, that's why, you know, I, I, the president should have done this two years earlier. He didn't. Uh, he's doing it now, and I'm supportive. Yeah. Uh, in two th- so we have, again, major fighting in the Middle East. We have um, their bombing refineries. Um, there's all sorts of strife in that area. Oil prices have gone down, uh, Congressman Shimkus. And I read a stat the other day. I want you to talk about this a second. In 2008, the United States imported 10 million barrels a day. Today, it's like six and a half. Yeah, that's right. That's extraordinary. It's a great... Well, and you look at the economy of this country and how it's still kind of in a malaise. I don't think anyone thinks we're... Look at where we'd be without the, uh, the evolution of new technology to recover energy within right. our, with our own shores. Uh, so that's a fracking debate. That's either fracking for crude oil. That's fracking for natural gas. The, uh, that's the Blockins in North, Dak- uh, North Dakota. That's also the... Uh, Keystone XL, if we ever get that, it's pushing, it's pushing Saudi crude, it's pushing Venezuela crude out of our market. Right. And, and there's nothing but good there. Right. Um, and so, uh, and then we, we may get to, to Europe, look at what's going to happen to U- Ukraine right now. I mean, in the winter, mm-hmm. they're going to be frozen. The, the Russians are going to shut off their natural gas supplies. Uh, Lithuania that I've, I've dealt with very closely has had, a little foresight two years ago started building an import terminal for natural gas which will be in operation this december so we have to help our allies decrease their their uh, uh dependency right. on russia too so um, energy is still an important aspect of our daily lives and we're just fortunate and blessed that we're in a position now that we're not being held captive right and and have to pay the prices to people who dislike us i thought i think that that is that's sort of a story that's not being reported. We're bombing, and oil prices are going down. That's right. almost unheard of. Right, and we're we're and we're striking at the um, ISO refineries and oil production facilities right. in Syria. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then I so we uh, uh, Russia and the Ukraine because of that's going on. They embargoed our chicken. Right. Right. And. We said, fine, we sold our chicken somewhere else, and chicken in, in Russia and the Ukraine is going through the roof. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, again, I, I'm very fortunate to have uh, relationships with uh, parliamentarians from those, the, those countries. Um, both sides of the border would benefit. The individual citizens would benefit if you didn't have this Russian-Putin mentality of reestablishing the empire. Right. And so... Both people, the Lithuanians right now, are made their their major export market is in milk and cheese is to Russia. Well, they've stopped that, so now their milk and cheese market is uh, captive to to local. They can't export, so both sides are getting hurt by the inability of of leaders. And I, I put this all at the feet of of, of Putin, uh, a desire to reestablish the empire, mm-hmm. um, much like the czars, much like the communist. Uh, and but even with that stress and strain on the Russian economy, I don't know what the the uh, the polling numbers are today or right. the last couple of weeks, but his poll numbers were going up. Right. Well, there's a sense of, of national pride or whatever else. But once the oil hits, the chicken hits, you have to go to the store. Right. I mean, it, you it's, would hope you would hope. Right. I don't know. It's a it's a it's a it's an interesting debate. All right. One last thing for you, Congressman Shimkus. Um we keep talking about, or we keep, I keep hearing about boots on the ground. You have to have boots on the ground. Somebody's boots are, are going to have to to be on the ground. Do you have to put boots on the ground to solve this Syrian ISIL problem? Well, you're talking to an infantryman, right? Bra, so uh, you can't uh, win and uh, win battles unless you hold and maintain land. Air power is great, uh, but 
as an infantryman, you have to seize and hold terrain. Mm-hmm. So that's where the whole boots on the ground. We would hope those boots on the ground will be uh, the fr- members of the Free Syrian Army and, and other folks. But as we talk about the Iraqi military, they have, they have not shown to be a very fervent in their, in their commitment to hold, seize and hold terrain. Right. So warfare is won by seizing and holding terrain, and that means boots on the ground. So you would be in favor of putting some type of boot, boots on the ground somewhere in... Where are you on all this? Well, who we have boots on the ground there now. Right. If you remember that, and then run up to this, there was 300, 300, 300. There's probably 1,200. Well, they're, they're called advisors. They're not called troops. And is there a difference? <laughs> and is there a difference? I mean, tell us, is there a difference? What does um, that mean? Well, I think maybe advisors, maybe targeting, maybe, uh, you know, these uh, precision guide munitions have to f- know where they're going Somehow. Right. And sometimes that's through satellite imagery and, and our intel folks, and that sometimes... It's a guy on the ground with hooking a up a laser gui- guiding munitions in. So I don't know. I'm not on the Armed Services Committee. Um, I would hope that we would go down this route of having the Arab forces be the boots on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Kosovo, in that time, you know, we did bomb that right. in that area, and that somewhat at least created a frozen conflict. A frozen conflict is no winners, no losers. Everybody just stopped fighting. Right. And, see, and, and that kind of relates to what Russia is doing. They're trying to create frozen conflicts so no one can get really ahead. It just freezes things in place um, without seizing and holding troops. So you would, be in fa- you, you would be in favor of troops on the ground at some point with uh, this? I'm in favor of Arab troops on the ground fighting to reclaim What about the land. United States troops? Uh, well, again, we, we have some uh, that are doing their mission, but major numbers, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, we're we're still a very war weary nation, um, and I've gone to too many funerals and right. local leaders and National Guard folks, and uh, this is not the time yet. Congressman Shimkus, what are you working on that will wow us going going forward? What's the future hold? Well, the future holds uh, a Republican majority in the House still, maybe growing, and yes. hopefully a. a you know, a Republican uh, Senate, and then we can put things on the president's desk. You know, the real issue would be budgetary issues and then maybe attaching some things to the budgetary uh, concerns. There's so. a theory out there that if the Republicans take the Senate, um, that you will be able to work with the president and the president will be able <laughs> to work with the Republicans to get more done than if the House, than if the Senate stays Democratic. Well, we do know, based upon this last two years of uh, of Congress, the observers, I, and, and it's, it gets frustrating. A do nothing Congress. Uh, well, a do nothing Congress. There's two chambers. We've we've got 384 bills. Some mm-hmm. are very bipartisan, large numbers that sits over in the Senate desk, and the and the president um, is uh, Harry Reid's protecting his majority by not forcing them to vote on major public policy bills. Uh, and so there is nothing getting through right. the legislative branch to get to the president's desk. Uh, I thought maybe the president would triangulate after he got reelected and, right. and didn't happen. Yeah. So I'm not optimistic. I, I, I can't tell you what, what the world would look like after election. All I know is that we'd be able to move some things to get to the president's desk and, and hopefully uh, he would sign some yeah. of those. Uh, Bruce Weiner going to win? Bruce Rauner is doing great, working real hard. I'm very proud of him. I'm going to be with him tomorrow. Uh, and, yeah, I think he can win. What about Rodney Davis? Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, your fellow Republican uh, colleague in the House in Southern Illinois. Yeah, we, uh, we love Rodney. He's working real hard. He's, uh, he's solidified. He that was a targeted, that, that was a targeted district, wasn't it? Was it was a targeted district. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the other great race to, to watch is the 12th district, which is Mike Boss and Bill Enyart. That's, right. uh, That's getting ugly. Really, Alton. Well, it's competitive. When when it starts getting ugly, you know, no, it's I highly say ugly, competitive. You, you say competitive. Okay, yeah. yeah. But it goes Alton all the way down to Cairo, and um, right. it's uh, the broadcasters are making a lot of money on that race. Yeah, I know well, that. That's that's one good thing. <laughs> uh, Congressman Shimkus, always a pleasure. Be safe, travel safe, and uh, you're always welcome here. Well, that's beautiful, and welcome to your new facilities. You got it. Thanks. Right. Uh, don't Thanks. forget to sign the wall. Nine twenty four here. Big five.